Now beyond being completely free, open source and self-hostable, where this app succeeds is not in a massive feature set or really anything innovative, but in its overall lack of features and simplicity. Beaver Habit here is a pretty simple habit tracking application without goals and even says it right here front and center. Meaning you put down or you add whatever habits that you would like to track and then it gives you a real nice format of the days and all you do when you do the thing is tap on it, checks it off, and life is good. There's a couple other features we'll get into but that is really about it. I have tried numerous of these kind of self-help habit tracking uh, to do a bunch of different applications and all of them I never end up being able to follow through with primarily because there are so many features and so many different things that you could do with them that I try to learn how to do and utilize every feature to the point that it becomes like redundant and unnecessary. Or even worse, many of the features are stuck behind some kind of paywall. This right here is my instance of Beaver Habit and you can see I only have a couple things on there, mostly to do with uh, kind of fitness and actually answering emails. And you can see we have the days of the week here, we can check it and that's it. If I go ahead and open one, so if I go like to this push-ups one, for example, it opens up in a wider view so you could see for the last three months how well you did at keeping up on that habit that you want to track. There's also a history right there. I haven't uh, used it too much. I've just installed this and started utilizing it. So I don't have too much going on here yet, but overall it is nice. I keep saying app, it is an application, but they don't have like a native iOS or Android application. This, what you're seeing right here, is viewed within a web browser. But on iOS, they do have experimental support to make it feel like an app. It's not perfect yet, so like if I tap on one of these, for example, it's obviously in a web browser. And really adding and editing these is pretty simple. All we do is hit the little hamburger menu here, click on add, and then it will take us to a list. So I can add a new item and let's say I want it to walk the dog. Let's say that's something I want to do. Hit done. Actually, I need to hit return to make it add. And actually setting this thing up is pretty easy. It's just a really lightweight, really small Docker container. It's right on their GitHub page. It is a Docker run command, but you could throw it into like a, a Composerize to get an actual uh, compose stack out of it if you'd like to. I'd recommend watching my uh, kind of Docker basics video that I have to get all that set up, get Protainer installed. I just threw it in the stack on there. The really only edits I made is I changed the user ID to match my local main user ID, so a thousand, a thousand. I needed to change the port because that one was used up, so I changed it to uh, 3 or 3002 for the actual exposed port, not the internal port. Do not change that. There are some other environmental variables such as the storage type. I just went with the default, the uh, user disk storage, which puts all the data in a JSON file. You could change the first start day of the week. We have max user count, so if you don't want other people like getting access and trying to sign up to it, you could change that. So yeah, that's about it. I'll link down below to their GitHub page, as well as I might as well throw in the little Docker Compose stack that I used. Well, not stack, but just single application Docker Compose. So you just copy and paste it if you would like to. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.